Hello everyone, Sally here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple, cheap and efficient hostile mob farm in your Bedrock Edition worlds. This mob farm is pretty efficient, providing up to 6,400 drops per hour. It's a great source of bones, gunpowder, string, arrows and various other mob drops. We're using multiple advanced trident killers to give you the looting 3 effect and provide you with the maximum amount of drops from your mob farm. And this also gives you a fair amount of bonus experience too. Experience isn't really the focus of the mob farm, but it gets you to level 30 within about 17 and a half minutes, which is a nice little perk of the design. If you want to, you don't even need to build the entire mob farm. You can build just half of it and that will still give you around 4,200 drops per hour. Overall, this is an incredibly simple, very easy to build, and relatively cheap mob farm to throw together in your worlds, and I think it'll serve you very well. Now, I know all of you guys have been wanting a creeper-only farm for like the longest time ever, However, a creeper farm is not quite ready yet. This is still a very good mob farm and it will provide you with a ton of gunpowder and all of these other various drops as well. Overall, this is honestly probably better than a creeper only farm. You get experience, you get your bones, your string, your arrows, and your gunpowder as well. So there's really no reason to not build this if you're holding out for a creeper farm. And let's take a closer look at this mob farm, shall we? There's nothing amazingly special about it. Overall, it's a pretty standard design, but it does work really, really well. All you need to do to use this mob farm is literally just stand right here on top of this trapdoor and you will collect all of the experience from the bubble column and from the entire mob farm just by standing here. This lever right here will turn on or off the trident killers, basically turning your entire mob farm on or off. And of course you want to turn off the farm before leaving the area. Typically all of your item collection will be down here below using some hopper minecarts to go into your custom storage system. All of the magic is happening over here on the sides where the actual mobs spawn of course. So we have 8 spawning layers tall and technically there are 16 spawning layers to either side of the AFK spot. This is a really really simple way of building the farm. So basically all of the mobs will spawn right here on these blocks inside of the scaffolding. The scaffolding does not block any mob spawns whatsoever and then simply put all of the water will just push the mobs to the kill chambers and that's really all there is to it. It is like such a simple way of doing things and it works incredibly well as well. It works for your creepers, your zombies, your skeletons, your witches, and even your spiders. The spiders do find their way to the kill chamber relatively quickly, all things considered. And then down here at the bottom we have some magma blocks inside of the water streams just to kill any mobs that are very much resisting the flow of the water or to slightly damage them and just help them die a bit quicker and those trident killers. Inside of the trident killers we are using impaling five tridents to basically instantly kill the mobs. As you can see they are just a one hit kill with these trident killers and that really helps us boost our rates too. From there, all the items and experience from those mobs go into the item stream and the experience gets delivered to the player while the items get sorted out by your hopper minecarts. A real quick note about the rates and the drops of this farm, you can actually get over 19 different drops from this specific mob farm. So in this chest right here, you can see one third of what you'll get every single hour. Of course, you get your flesh, your gunpowder, your string, arrows, bones, and your seven different witch drops, including redstone, glowstone, sugar, bottles, sticks, etc. You can also get your spider eyes, and because we're killing the mobs with looting three, you get potatoes, carrots, and iron from your zombies. You can also get endermen with this farm, so you might see a couple ender eyes per hour. Not only that, you also get pillage or patrols, so you might see a couple of emeralds and various iron tools or weapons. Not to mention, you can also get swiftness potions and health potions from killing the witches. I've never seen a fire resistance potion, but there are magma blocks in the farm, so it might be possible. Not only that, you also get like all of this other junk. Yeah, you get like six double chests of this per hour. You don't want this, you don't need this. Throw this into fire, please. <laughs> this mob farm has been specifically designed for a sim distance of four, so you can build this on any world, any realm, any server, absolutely anywhere you want to. This farm will work just fine for you and provide you with your full rates. You can build this on a sim distance of six, eight, 10, 12, or whatever you want, but I'm not sure the rates of that 
although the rates should be similar. I would like to quickly demonstrate this farm using the texture pack from CJBot that marks out the sim distance spawning for simulation distance of 4. As you can see, there is two spheres. The green one is 24 blocks away from the player. Nothing will spawn inside of that. And the red one is 44 blocks away from the player. Nothing will spawn outside of that when playing on sim distance of 4. So as you can see, these two mob farms and these 32 spawn platforms are just completely shoved within this teeny tiny little area. And we're actually getting some really really good spawns from it. I'm quite happy with it. Of course, there are a few spots that are getting cut off by the despawn sphere. As you can see, kind of like these corners right here, you might lose a couple of mobs. Overall, that's not really going to be a big deal. And the inner edge also is losing a couple of spawn spots on each platform as well. Again, not really a big deal. You don't need to worry about building around that. Just build the farm. It's such a simple thing. You don't really need to worry about some of these spots being unspawnable. Technically, you could add more spawn layers going up or you could even make these platforms a little bit wider especially this inner section of platforms you could definitely make this significantly wider however i'm pretty happy with the rates that we've gotten from the farm thus far and i'm pretty happy with the size of the farm as well and I think this is about as best as you're really going to get for the effort put in. Massive thank you to Spirit Raider for showing me the concept of using scaffolding and water for the mob farm spawning platforms. Turns out that's a really, really good way of getting the mob farms to be very, very efficient. And I had not considered that before. So massive thank you again, Spirit Raider. And also thanks for helping me design and refine the mob farms in general. It was quite fun. The last thing to talk about before we hop into the tutorial is, of course, all the different spawning floor layouts that you can use to customize your mob farm and also the general mechanics of mob spawning on bedrock edition i have had this mob farm and creeper farms in the works since december i wanted this tutorial to come out for christmas but that obviously did not happen since it is now february there's a few different ways of making your spawning platforms to either allow or disallow certain types of mob spawns so floor design number one is 100 density that means that mobs can spawn literally anywhere on this platform this allows for your spiders your zombies your skeletons your creepers all of that good stuff they all spawn in there the major downside to this one is that these spiders can kind of sit around for a while and that doesn't really matter the spiders will either eventually despawn or find their way into the kill chamber as you can see there once they go above the scaffolding they can't go back down and then they go into your kill chamber so ultimately the spiders are not really that big of a deal and this is the platform that i got the best over for all rates with for floor number two you can actually prevent these spider spawns entirely by having a grid layout of buttons as you can see here we have a button every other block and a grid formation and this completely prevents the spawning of spiders the rates are pretty okay with this but it's not as good as the 100 density layout i believe this one is a two-thirds density layout I'm not entirely sure of the density of this one, but you lose a lot of spawning spots due to those buttons preventing spawns, and you lose a lot of spawning attempts due to spiders not being able to spawn either. Overall, it's not really worth it in the long run. Up next, we have spawning floor type number three. This is a creeper-only farm, so we're combining the button grids with some trap doors, and this one gets absolutely horrid rates. This gets like 60 gunpowder an hour. Don't, just, just don't, just, no, just don't build that. Finally, we have floor type number four. This is the most interesting one, I believe, as it's a very interesting way of dealing with these spiders. This one is a two-thirds density, so mobs can spawn on two-thirds of the available spots of the entire platform. And basically, no matter where a spider spawns, it's going to get pushed along by the water streams, as you can see there, and they immediately get pushed out of the farm, which is a pretty interesting way of doing things. I really quite like that. And that's really all there is to it. Of course, you can see the rates are from all four of these different designs. And overall, the full density design is by far the best from my experience. This kind of mob farm might seem a little bit unique to you, at least if you've seen other types of mob farms or built other mob farms on a Bedrock Edition. Before you here, you can see a bunch of different spawning platform layouts that I've tried and built and tested over the last couple of months. And basically, every single one of these is absolute garbage. 
and I was really stuck on this problem for quite a while, and that's why the mob farm and the creeper farm have been delayed until now. These are basically all the standard platforms and some additional ones that I came up with just to try them out and see what was up with them. And there's two main issues with all of these standard platforms that really prevent you from getting a lot of good rates. First of all is the density of spawn spots, so like this standard design right here that we used in our previous mob farm and that's just like a really standard thing to do for mob farms where you have your mob spawn and then they spawn inside a glass and then they instantly fall down into the kill chamber. Overall, it sounds like a really good idea and it can work really well for you. However, you still have to deal with the spiders pathfinding over the fans or in previous updates buttons. Also, with this design, you can have three spawning rows per seven blocks, whereas when you use scaffolding and water, you can have seven rows of spawning blocks per seven blocks. There's really no comparison when it comes to the density of spawning spaces when you compare any of these designs to the scaffolding and water. The other major issue that a lot of mob farms have is the buttons get spammed absolutely everywhere, preventing even more spawns from happening and decreasing the density even lower. Of course, the buttons are there to prevent the spiders from spawning because spiders are absolute meanies and they're so silly and they're the bane of any mob farm designer's existence honestly spiders can they just not exist can we just remove them i want to get all my string from cats can i can we do that please <laughs> they're terrible so obviously the natural choice is just to get rid of them however that brings with you two major issues first of all of course you decrease the density of spawning spots in your farm and you're decreasing the amount of spawn attempts as well because you're just like whenever a spider is trying to spawn it fails spawning and then it just kind of aborts the spawn attempt so that decreases your rates quite a bit it's kind of a double whammy of issues now typically you would be able to kind of increase your density of spawning spaces by putting them a block closer together because all of your mobs are now only one wide so you can kind of have a platform like this one right here but this requires them to pathfind off of the trapdoors, which doesn't really happen all that often. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get the instant push with glass and buttons to work because they just literally don't spawn at all. You get no spawns at all when you combine the instant push of these designs with the button prevention. In reality, most mob farms have a triple whammy working against them and preventing them from getting good or rates simply because they stack all of their buttons or whatever they use to prevent spider spawns directly on top of one another so all the platforms are exactly the same and if you look at it like this there's just button 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 all the way down the row now how bedrock edition works when it spawns mobs is it spawns entire columns of mobs at one time so if the game chooses this block right here to spawn a mob on it's going to spawn a mob there and there and there and there going all the way down the row so what happens when you have all your buttons in line with another like this is when the game chooses to spawn a mob right here it's going to completely fail at spawning a mob going all the way down the row and you're not going to get a single spawn from that attempt. Now, if you alternate your buttons, it's not going to give you a massive boost to your rates, but it will help you squeeze those rates from your mob farm, which of course is very, very helpful. So when the game chooses like this block right here to spawn mobs on, of course it's going to fail from that button, but you will get a spawn from that one and that one. And then there's creeper only farms. Don't get me started on creeper only farms. These things have been significantly nerfed in recent updates. As of like 1.13 Java edition, cats had like a 16 block radius that they would scare creepers away from them, which was crazy. But as of 1.16 Java and Bedrock, they only have like a three block radius. So this is literally the entire extent of the area that cats can scare creepers away from them. And um, yeah, it's very bad. As you can see, not good at all. You would need so many of these platforms to have a creeper only farm using this kind of mechanic. Not only that, don't forget that you need to place down buttons absolutely everywhere to prevent your spiders from spawning. And you'll also need some fences on the edges to prevent spiders from spawning on the northwest corner. And then, you know, not having a button within range. So you kind of got to work around a whole lot of things. Creeper only farms, there's just not a lot working towards them. They're 
honestly isn't. That's why you're getting a mob farm today. Enjoy it. There's also going to be a world download down in the description of the video. You can download this world with this mob farm and with all my mob farm testing and spawning layouts and all that good stuff if you feel like conducting your own spawning tests and your own worlds. Furthermore, one little note I'd like to say is that if you do want to conduct your own test with this farm, you can actually swap out all the spawning floors really easily. All you gotta do is type in like floor 2 for example, and then hit load, and that'll give you floor design number 2. Or you can put in floor number 3 for the creeper only, or you can put in floor number 5 for the fence gates. And then of course floor 1 is just the standard whole density. And all the rates from all of my tests are down there on that little platform. And now we are ready to begin building this monstrosity up in the sky and your Minecraft worlds. For your convenience there is a materials list down in the description of the video. That way you know absolutely everything you need to build this mob farm. The first thing that we're going to do is find ourselves a good area to build. I would recommend building above an ocean. It's the easiest thing to work with. You can build above like a normal plains biome or some mountains or whatever but then you're going to need to go higher up into the air to make sure that nothing spawns below you on these mountains or whatever while you're AFKing. So ideally just find yourself a nice little ocean and then you want to go 109 blocks up into the air and that should bring you all the way up here to Y173 and this is going to be the lowest layer of your mob farm. Now once you're up here in the air at Y173 you want to choose a central point for your mob farm and simply place down a soul sand this is going to be the basis of your water elevator before choosing the central spot of your farm make sure to chunk line it as well i've made a video on how to find chunk borders and basically what you want to do is go ahead and mark out the 16 by 16 area that is going to be the central chunk of where you want your afk spot to be then you want to choose somewhere in the middle two by two of that chunk and place down your soul sand there that is going to be the central point of your farm it is very very important to chunk align the center of your mob farm that way you don't have any issues with the trident killers breaking due to chunk borders later on in the tutorial from here you want to go upwards by 19 blocks and this is where your afk spot is going to be your afk spot is going to be directly above that soul sand which is also the central point of the farm just a little bit of a note right here if you're playing on sim distance of four you technically only need to go about 44 blocks up into the air and if you're playing on sim distance six or above then you need to go all the way up to 109 blocks in the air just to prevent anything from spawning in the ocean down below you i prefer to play it safe and just go all the way up to y173 regardless of sim distance also, furthermore, the farm is the exact same on both sides, so if you want to build, you know, both sides of the mob farm, everything that we do on one side is exactly the same on the other side as well. And now you're ready to go. You now want to decide in what direction you want to build your mob farm. It doesn't really matter, but I would recommend either building on the southern or the northern sides, just to kind of take advantage of how exactly mobs spawn. Regardless of which direction you choose to build in, you want to go out 30 blocks from your soul sand down here with packed ice. So starting right here and then counting all the way out to here, that is 30 blocks. From there, you want to extend it to the right to buy four packed ice and then extend it to the left by another five packed ice. And now we're going to build up the advanced trident killers on these sides of this platform. So the first thing we're going to do is install a two by two of packed ice right here. That's going to be the center of the trident killer. And then simply surround that with solid blocks on all sides, making sure not to obstruct the water stream that is right here. Install your four pistons in these locations right here and fill in solid blocks between all of those. Make sure to include a stair in that corner and then fill in solid blocks in those areas and put yourself a trap door right there. We're now going to put a dropper in this front left corner and solid blocks above each of these pistons like so. Put yourself in an observer facing that dropper, a repeater right here on two ticks, observer facing the repeater, repeater on two ticks right there, observer right here facing that one, and then a repeater right here on one tick as well. Make an observer face of that dude. And now we're going to surround the rest of this build in a layer of solid blocks on the outside to prevent mobs from glitching outside of the build. 
Once you have all those solid blocks in place, go to the inside of the build and waterlog that stair and waterlog that piston as well. You can now go ahead and throw your impaling five trident into the center of the trident killer. And keep in mind, whoever throws this trident is going to be the player that is linked to it. So the player has to be online and holding a looting three sword for the best rates to come from the farm and to get experience from the farm as well. Anyway, now that you have one of these Trident Killers built, we're going to build the exact same thing over on this corner as well. The 2x2 two two of ice begins right here in this area. So basically build that dude, but right here as well. And this is what it should look like when both Trident Killers are installed. You will notice that the left side is a little bit different. The dropper is in the right corner instead of the left one. That is because we're going to have a redstone line right between these two builds to power both of these droppers and churn off the Trident Killers, kind of like how these levers are right now so make sure that you have your repeaters on two ticks here two ticks there and then one tick there and then of course that dropper in the corner just slightly mirrored version of what we built over there now is also a good time to test both of these trident killers so unpower both of those levers and just let these run for a couple of minutes if they run in this exact kind of you know sequence right here where it's just one piston at a time you know that it is going to work properly and be reliable in the long term however if all the pistons start spamming and multiple are firing at one time you know there's a chunk border in the way and the trident killer is not going to work where you have built it you might want to rebuild your trident killers in a different area we're now going to go ahead and put in the magma block floor so just go ahead and put in a line of magma blocks between these two trident killers now you want to expand the magma block platform eight blocks to each side so one two three four five six seven eight and of course do that on the other side as well And now you want to go ahead and put a two block tall wall going all the way around this. You don't need to make it out of glass blocks, but I do prefer the look of glass blocks. That always allows you to look in there and see what is happening. So basically just make that going all the way around your magma blocks. You also want to put glass blocks in these areas or just some sort of filler block. That way nothing spawns on top of these redstone components. And of course, make sure to get glass in these areas on the back side as well. We are going to finish up our water streams down here. So all you need to do is connect up these two modules with a couple of glass blocks right there, and then put some glass in this area as well. Again, you don't specifically need to use glass for this, but it does look nice and it allows you to see if any items are getting stuck in your water streams too. So simply go ahead and continue these along on either side to the point where your soul sand is. We're now gonna go ahead and place a water bucket right here beneath that trap door and a glass block right there in front of the trapdoor and do the same thing on this side too. Once that water and glass is installed, go to the point where the water ends, place down yourself a button and then another piece of water. Let that flow all the way to the end, place down another button, another piece of water, and then just repeat that process until you get to the center, at which point you need to place a button right next to that soul sand. Now we need to go ahead and put a layer of solid blocks above our water stream. So just go ahead and put some solid blocks all above this. This will prevent fish and squid and drowns from spawning in your water stream, which which can be rather annoying, especially if they go up the bubble column to where you are AFKing. So once you have that solid blocks installed, go back to where your soul sand is. You want to go over three blocks from the soul sand. So one, two, three, place in another solid block, a redstone torch off the side of that block, and then bring a redstone line out as far as it is going to go powered. So as you can see, this right here is the final piece of powered redstone. If we put a repeater there, it's not going to turn on. If we put one there, it will be turned on. And then this should have enough power to activate both of those droppers, just like so. While we're over here, we're going to go ahead and finish up the bubble column. So real quick, we're going to replace this block and that block with a glass block, just to prevent anything from possibly spawning right here that shouldn't be. And now we're going to continue up with a little cylinder around your soul sand and just continue that all the way up to your AFK spots, of course. As you're going up, you want to place ice blocks in the middle of this little, you know, tube that we're building and then we're going to go ahead and break these ice blocks without silk touch and that is going to make them all turn into water sources that's going to be a very easy way of turning this entire tube into water sources for your bubble column to activate now that we have all the water in place we're going to go ahead and place down a trap door in that very top of bubble column sometimes you might need to open this xp is a little bit glitchy so you never know what you might need to do anyway go ahead and place that there you're also going to want to place some solid 
solid blocks above your AFK spot. If you have solid blocks literally anywhere above your head, that will prevent phantoms from spawning, and then they will not be able to kill you. I would recommend putting some slabs on top of this as well, just to, you know, prevent anything from spawning on top of the thing that's supposed to protect you from mobs. Anyway, now go ahead and place yourself in a redstone lamp on the side facing your mob farm and place in yourself a lever above that as well. We're going to install the redstone line to activate that redstone line down there. And how we're going to do this is just fill in ourselves a too wide thing of glass going all the way down basically. Now that the glass is installed, just go ahead and power that lever right there. Put in yourself some redstone redstone and then basically just zigzag that going all the way down down to this solid block with the redstone torch on it and you should end up with something that looks exactly like that now whenever that redstone lamp is on the trident killers are going to be active and your mob farm will be on so we're going to go ahead and turn that off the final thing to do before working on the spawning platforms is to install some item collection the easiest place to do this is to simply have yourself a hopper mine cart down in this area so place in yourself a hopper going into a chest right there and then simply have yourself some saw blocks to the sides of that a rail and then a hopper mine cart and that should collect pretty much every single item from your item stream you might need multiple hopper mine carts depending on your luck but that is basically going to be some very basic item collection. You can of course run that into whatever kind of storage system you like. Moving on to the spawn platforms. These things are really really easy to build and you shouldn't have any trouble throwing these together in no time at all. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to place down a line of blocks right here. This should be 27 blocks wide and it should line up with that glass wall that we built earlier. So if that's 27, you've done everything correctly. We're now going to make this eight blocks deep so that's two three four five six seven eight and then simply go ahead and connect that up to the corner over here and then you guessed it we got to go ahead and fill in this entire platform and that's really all there is to it once you've filled in the entire platform go ahead and put a wall around this as well this is going to be a two block of tall wall you can make this wall out of other solid blocks if you want to or you can build it out of glass if you so prefer and that's what one spawning platform will look like now go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And this is the basics of what two spawning platforms will look like. Now that we have this basic format in place, we're going to go ahead and finish up some other details that we need to do. For example, we need to go ahead and place in some dead coral fans right here on the edges of these magma blocks leading into the trident killers. Dead coral fans act like how buttons used to, and they kind of act like trapdoors as well. Basically, mobs see these as full blocks, so they're fine at trying to walk onto them and then of course they fall into them and you now go into your trident killers so you want a couple of those on the insides of your trident killers you can of course acquire these from the coral reefs or you can buy them sometimes from the wandering trader keep in mind you need the coral fans that can be placed on the tops or the sides of blocks so make sure you are collecting the correct thing furthermore as soon as you place down an alive coral fan outside of water it's basically gonna die instantly that doesn't matter they function exactly the same whether they are alive or dead so don't worry about it now we're going to go ahead and install the water on the far left and the far right side of the farm and that'll push all the mobs towards the two trident killers as you can see there now we need to go ahead and install some signs right above these fans towards the little center bit of the magma that we have right here this will prevent water from going into the trident killers and destroying your fans now line yourself up with the center of the build and with your center water line for your item collection. Install yourself a stair right here, turn around, and then place in two stairs. One right there and one right there. Now go ahead and waterlog both of those stairs and waterlog that one as well. That custom water layout will prevent you from having any dead spots inside of this area. We're now ready to fill in the two spawning platforms that we have already built. So this is really straightforward. All you need to do is like literally place one scaffolding onto every single block of this entire platform. And you know what? I'm a bit lazy for that. So there we go. We're just going to go ahead and fill in all of that scaffolding. Now the easiest thing to do from here is probably to place in ice blocks every other block and then break that without silk touch and that should form infinite water sources going all the way along this entire edge or you can just go in here with a couple of water buckets and do it that way 
if you don't have access to Silk Touch or if you just don't feel like bringing in a bunch of ice. And then once you place it in the water, that is all there is to it. You'll notice if you miss any water sources because some of the scaffolding will not have water above it. So you can go back through and fill in any that you miss. And that's really all there is to it. You got to do that for the other side as well. Before we start building our next layer upwards, what we're going to do is install a bunch of more coral fans right here on this edge. We need an entire row of coral fans going all the way across in this area, simply to prevent spiders from climbing back up out of the water streams. If you don't have these here, Spiders that fall down onto the water streams can easily climb up and out and then go back into your spawning platforms. So make sure you install that line of coral fans and that will significantly help you with your spider problems. And now it is time for the grind. You gotta go ahead and build up the rest of the spawning platforms. You have one layer in now. You need to build this eight layers in total. So basically you gotta build 14 more platforms so the next layer of solid blocks goes directly above your water sources. Of course, this is going to be eight blocks deep and 27 blocks wide. Once you go ahead and fill in this entire platform of your solid blocks, then all you got to do is, of course, build up your two tall walls going all the way around that. Put your scaffolding on top of every single available block. And then, of course, put your water in the back. Now, as soon as you start installing your second platform, you should see possibly some mob spawns. Be careful from here on out. There might be some creepers, skeletons, witches, or zombies in your mob farm. And there you go. You now have a total of 16 spawning platforms in place. That wasn't so difficult at all, was it? Very, very nice. It's looking good already, isn't it? Now, one thing that you'll need to do on either side, both the left and the right, is extend this little wall going all the way up to the top. That way, no mobs land on it and then possibly just sit around for a couple of minutes before they eventually despawn and clog up your farm. So, go ahead and put these blocks in place. And now, above the very top platform, you do have a choice to make. Uh, what you can do here is either put yourself in a layer of slabs right here, just lower slabs, and this will prevent endermen from spawning. Now, if endermen spawn in your farm that's actually perfectly fine you'll get like you know one to three ender pearls per hour it's not really a big deal there's nowhere that they can teleport to and they're just gonna die from the water or the trident killers eventually but if you don't want endermen then just go ahead and put yourself a little slab roof above this place and you'll be good to go Furthermore, if you're not going to put a slab roof here, then you'll need to extend these walls a block higher. That way mobs don't bob out of your water streams and land on the glass wall right here. So either way, either extend these walls up by a block or just put in yourself a slab roof. Technically, your mob farm does actually work. If we set the time to midnight, we should see a bunch of mobs basically instantly spawn inside of that thing. Yeah, as you can see, just a whole bunch of mobs instantly into the Trident Killer. They just want you to farm them. They want you to take their drops from them and turn them into rockets. So that's really all there is to it. If you only want to use your farm at nighttime, then your farm is technically done. I'm sure you also want to use your mob farm during the daytime as well. So what we need to do is install a massive roof over the build. That way it is dark at all times and can spawn mobs at all times. So what we need to do is we need to go four blocks above the sides of the build, as you can see here four blocks and then on the fifth we're going to have a roof layer of leaves now the leaves only need to be above the blocks where you actually have your spawning platform so for example you don't need leaves like above your glass walls you only need leaves above the spots where you have your scaffolding this is going to be a rather large roof of leaves but this will allow you to get surface spawns inside of your mob farm if you build this roof out of solid blocks, then you're only going to get cave spawns inside of your mob farm, which will significantly hurt your rates. However, building it out of leaves allows you to get the surface spawns on the very top layer, which will really help out your rates in the long run. So as you can see, basically just put the leaves lined up with the actual spawning layers themselves fill in that entire thing that is the central layer of the roof that's purely there to get the surface spawns for the top layer the rest of the roof extension is here to actually make the farm dark and you know make it so that mobs spawn at any time of the day 
Now, what you need to do for this is extend the roof by seven blocks in every direction. Starting at the corners, we're gonna go out by seven blocks, just like so, and then go ahead and connect up these corners. Now, I'm building the roof extension out of solid blocks, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. We don't need to worry about getting surface spawns beneath this. However, if you're building out of solid blocks, you need to also make sure that you cover up those solid blocks with a layer of slabs too, that way nothing spawns on top of your roof. If you don't feel like doing this solid block and slab combo, then all you need to do is just simply build the rest of the extension out of leaves. However, that's kind of like a whole lot of leaves, and chances are you probably don't want to go harvest that. Anyway, just go ahead and extend this roof of seven blocks in every direction, making sure to cut the corners like this, and your roof will be completely done. And this is the final product of your mob farm roof if you decide to go for the solid block slab leaf combo. As you can see, it actually does look pretty decent and kind of gives it a unique feel that not most mob farms have and overall i really do like the way that this mob farm looks once you turn on the trident killers, all of your mobs will get killed pretty much instantly and that will allow a lot more mobs to spawn. As you can see, there's just zombie after zombie after zombie. The mob farm is now completely done and a single module will give you around 4,200 drops per hour. Of course, if you want to build a second module, basically just rewatch the entire tutorial and build it on the opposite side and that'll give you around 6,400 drops per hour, which is very, very good. Although a singular mob farm is still a very respectable little farm and honestly it looks quite great as well. Now when you have two modules to connect the redstone together, it's very simple. Down here at the bottom we take a redstone torch into a redstone line, going through a waterlogged repeater into a block and then that just powers that line as well and that's really all there is to it. You don't need to do the waterlogged repeater thing, you can just like go around. But you know what? No one uses waterlogged repeaters enough and like they're fun to use. Now if you want to do that no items or experience will ever get stuck in there however if you're standing here of course you'll attract orbs to you so if you ever see any in there that's probably because you were standing too close to it if you have any questions comments or concerns regarding today's hostile mom farm tutorial of course let me know in the comment section down below i'm always trying to help you guys out as best as i possibly can also be sure to check the pinned comment if there's ever any updates or fixes to this mob farm thank you so very much for watching today's video if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like it really does help out the video and the channel a ton if you're new here then consider subscribing so you don't miss a future tutorials on the channel and otherwise i'll see you down in those comments and in the next one and then there was silence